round comes around, so I'm ready for the karma. Now I hold it up, throw the hoodie over the armor. Rolling through the hood, smoking presidential. Hello, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another video. You already know what I'm going to say. Go ahead and like and subscribe. So today's video, I actually have a special guest, Kasim. And the topic that I got was mature ways to move on and co-parent. So my co-guest is actually my child's father. And we're going to do this video together. So let's begin. All right, so... One, we got, how did you move on from your past relationship? Okay. Do you want to go first? Um, sure, I'll go. Um, basically, uh, taking time to yourself, um, learning yourself, doing things. Um, do Just basically doing things on your own because when you're in a relationship, it's like basically everything you're doing is with another person. So you have to kind of learn yourself all over again once that's over and uh getting just getting used to being in your own space it's it's a learning curve it's a journey in itself so uh i don't really have much else that's the best advice i could give for that it's hard it's gonna be it's not easy um you're gonna have some hard days and some days is gonna be easier than others yes i completely agree with everything you just said uh it's definitely a journey, so you have to go back to the beginning to think about what you did, what made you happy when you weren't a couple. Mm -hmm. um, friends, family, those are really good distractions. And then also, you kind of need that alone time. You got to get your mental back right as well. So it really definitely is a journey. And just like he said, you do have your ups and downs. Some days you're good. Other days you might be crying in the car. So you just mm -hmm. got to trust and believe your journey and just know that things get better. The Absolutely. world does not end, and there's somebody else out there, and just focus on you. The best thing you can do is focus on you. People will gravitate toward you. Um, you you attract the energy that you put out. So um, try not to like. I would say try not to look for anything and let things come to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you you'll find that the people that come to your life. Um, at, at certain stages are sometimes just for those stages or those chapters in your life not everybody is meant to be uh, in your life long term or uh, have a role in your have that role in your life for you know however long we may think that at the moment but sometimes people are in your life for a certain purpose you right. know lessons and exactly things of that everything nature. is a lesson so even with the bad, there's good. You got to just... Life is what you make it. And so in relationships, you got to take the good mm -hmm. and the bad. Learn about the lessons that you learned from dating someone. Learn about what you learned from yourself. And everything will be all right. That's the second one. What tips do you have for someone after a breakup? All right. So I think we basically answered tips. Um, work on yourself. It's okay to be alone. Uh, I know for me... Um, I, being alone helped me a little bit more. I think I just needed to be in my own space and then when I wanted to be around people, of course, I had family and friends. Mm -hmm. Just don't go to a dark place. Um, please refrain from drinking or doing drugs and stuff if that's not stuff that you was already into. Um, <laughs> that is not the time to overindulge that in those type thing. of things. But I yes. drink. I like to drink, so I mean it's scary um you don't want to go down the dark path and not be able to bounce back from it i mean a couple drinks and shots is there i've had i have my drunk nights too so that's not what i'm saying <laughs> but i'm just saying just make sure you don't go to a dark place and you start doing crazy stuff and right, lashing out right. as well um that's the best advice and like i said talk to people um we always have somebody that we can talk to about anything so when you have those days it's okay to do that um for me mine was my stepmother and my grandmother and they always give me very good advice they're obviously very seasoned in the game so i was thankful that i had those people in my life those are my tips I don't know right you talking to older people people that have been through you know more life they've lived more life you know they they have good advice usually typically uh, yeah. for things like that um like you said uh, distracting yourself is a good way um doing fun try to do things that uh just 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 do things that you enjoy, you know, tap into your own creativity, um, just try to find your passions and things things like that. Um, there's some 
You see, there's some tips in here. There's some more tips in here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, remember you're still family. Like, those are not tips. Those are our topics. Oh, topics. I mean, what? Well, <laughs> they're shit. different though. Those I mean, are just gonna be things I mean that we're gonna speak freely on. So since we already started talking about topics, what's your first topic? Remember you're still family. Okay. Which obviously you're the child of my mother. I mean you're the mother of my child, so uh, you're gonna be in my life forever. So uh, I'm, I done met your family. You met my family. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're still gonna be family. So. Uh, and a lot of times what I did want to say was a lot of reasons, um, the reasons why a lot of uh, baby mama, baby father relationships don't work or they co-parenting don't work is because they aren't over that situation. They are, they, there's still feelings there. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you have to be, you have to be over the situation. You, you, you have to respect boundaries and um, respect that they that person is now they live their own life you live your own life whatever right. they do is what they do correct you know? that's very important so, i yeah, think that's issue, a maturity too yes maturity because i have to say for us a lot of people be like i don't know how you guys co-parent so well baby was not easy okay not um easy. fresh after our breakup obviously we still have to co-parent because we have a daughter so i think um I think in the beginning, the very, very beginning, fresh after our breakup, he still tried to do like co-parenting things and I was not ready. Um, our breakup was really, really hard for me. So I just kind of wanted my own space and I didn't want to be bothered. So I just was like, nigga, fuck you. For real, that's how <laughs> I felt. So I couldn't really co-parent. And um, once I actually, I did have to get over him in our situation, I was good. And then I think around that time, it was kind of like the, the roles switched. And then for me, I was ready to co-parent and then he wasn't ready to co-parent. So you definitely, it's easier once you've moved on from a situation and y'all can communicate in right, a good, healthy way. That is, that is key right. word right That there. is very key word. You have word. to be able to uh, work as a team. Yes. Everything that involves the child is, is y'all made this child together. So everything has to be done together. Yeah. You know, when, where one person likes, the other one has to pick up and vice versa, you know. Right. And that's why we say, remember, that's your still family. Y'all right. don't have to live in a household to be family, but y'all created a family and y'all just have to remember that at the end of the day. And it does get really hard, but that's something to think about. There's something else we got. Um, it says, use your brain, not what other people think. Okay, yes. This, this one is for me. We were just talking about family. I think one of the serious issues I think we had with co-parenting is family and putting their input um, where I felt like it didn't need to be put. Um, I know for me, um, if my family felt a way about something Q did, they never really voiced it to him. They would voice it to me. Um, they would ask me how I felt. You know, it was really respectful for the most part. My family is old. Like I said, like I told y'all, my grandparents raised me. So they're in their 70s. So they ain't really with all that rah-wah <laughs> stuff. They just gonna be like, you good? So now you good? Blah, blah, blah. Here goes some advice. I think reverse. Um, Q's parents are younger. And um, his mom is, of course, very active and, um, and very opinionated about a lot of things. And so are some other family members. And I felt like, um, I don't like to be questioned. If you, if you know me, and like I said, we had dated from like 16 and so we dated for a long time, maybe like five and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like as uh y'all know me as a person. So y'all might not like certain things that transpired when we separated, but I did what I felt was best for Sanaya. At the end of the day, we don't matter, Sanaya matters. So with certain things, I always communicated with him. I'll say um child support um and custody, basically. Um, I made some certain decisions and I, it wasn't malicious. I don't believe in, well, we're not together. So I'm going to go put you on child support mm -hmm. or I'm going to. No, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. We just were not vibing as co-parents. And I just kind of felt like I was doing a lot of stuff on my own. And I, I didn't think I should have to. So even when I made my decisions, I did call him. I did let him know. I was like, listen, I'm letting you know, this is what I'm doing, blah, 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 blah. So it's not fucked up and you don't just get a letter in the mail and you're like, damn, well, what the hell is this? It's I always... easier to do it that way because now I know what to do um, on my part. 
and you know like uh you know now we can pay and when you're doing it together even with the child support thing like instead of um letting child support you know do all this extra shit we can talk about it amongst each other right and handle it and stuff we don't need to involve the courts and do all this extra shit that's just like it's just a lot and it, it it's, came it's, with it's, maturity because right. it was hard Right. So I feel like when we were going through those things, I I personally feel like maybe his family thought I was trying to be vindictive. And of course, no matter what you believe, no matter how cool you are with the other parents' family, their family is for them. It's always because that's their support. Right. So <laughs> they did side with him. And I feel like a lot of times um, I don't believe in being disrespectful, but I also don't believe in being disrespected. So when I felt a way, I would let him know and i would say i would rather you say something to your family than me because i know when i get frustrated or upset i can be very nasty i could be a nasty person i try not to be like that but um at a point i felt like all right i need to step in and say something because i'm not saying he didn't say something he probably did but like i said women are very opinionated anyway and when it's somebody's baby he's the baby mm -hmm. okay so his mama is very active she's very active in our child's life too so we had a couple disagreements it falls out and i felt like we shouldn't have had to because regardless just like i say to my family that's our child so whatever happens or transpires we have to figure it out of course it's okay to have your own opinion but just make sure you're being respectful so that's something i would say please make sure when y'all make choices you're not just going off of things that your family say you gotta remember you should know most people, I hope y'all know the person y'all had a baby with. <laughs> and knowing that we know each other, he should know, like, I ain't coming out here or I'm not doing this just to be petty. I'm doing this because of this, this, and this. And I even said that when we had um, our conversations. And they weren't always great because, like I said, we we had our baby at, I was 21, he was 20. So we're still young ourselves. So now we're dealing with, oh, we're not together. We got a co-parent. And let's figure this out. Now we're trial two. and error. Definitely trial and error. Living in two separate houses and trying to communicate, and it was a lot. Mm -hmm. so, what's our next topic? Uh, respect boundaries, aka mind your business. Yes. Okay. That's something I do very well. <laughs> yes, he do. He do. yes, he do for the most part. He do he 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 minds business. That is gonna help you a lot. If it don't have nothing to do with the baby certain things don't matter mind your business and i know a lot of issues that people have is dating after not being with your baby father or baby mother people have a really big issue with this a lot of people okay from a man's standpoint well i'm not not a man's standpoint from my standpoint of thinking like a man a lot of men feel like i don't want no other person around my son or my daughter they feel very strongly mm -hmm. about that and it, sometimes it's a little crazy but you got to think about it. If your baby mother is dating someone, then typically they're going to be around your child. And just like if you're dating someone, they're going to be around right. your child. So y'all have to find a, a healthy balance. You have to be able to trust the person that you had a kid with and trust their judgment of character. Right. Because there are crazy, malicious people out here that end up in situations where they're around children. And, you know, unfortunate things happen. So there has to be trust there. Like, right. um, I, I know you wouldn't have anybody around my kid that, you know, has bad intentions. So um, that's the, that's one thing. And then I think another thing that comes with that is uh, the whole, uh, I don't want nobody around my kids. That comes from you not really, it's not that you don't want them around your kids. You don't want to see them with anybody else for real. You don't want them in the relationship. You don't want to see them doing what, they was doing with you with somebody else. Right. That and is they used that. Uh, that's what I feel. And that's crazy. And also with dating, I feel like one, women, men shouldn't either, but don't have a lot of people around your baby. Right. If you're kind of, you're single and you're just kind of going out on dates and stuff. Me. Yes. Don't have those people around your child because it's not nothing serious. But once you feel like it's something serious or, you know, you know that you're going somewhere with the person, then you introduce them to your child. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like for us, something that we, um, well, that I did, my boyfriend was like, I want to meet um, Sonia's dad, you know, and I want to I want to talk to him and, you know, have a man to man conversation. And I, that was much respect. You know what I'm saying? They did do that. And I, I like I said to Q, you know, once you find whoever you're with or y'all, you decide that you want to be in a serious relationship, I would like to meet her, too. You know, just so she can get a feel of me, I can get a feel of her. 
and let that be that. But other than that, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I'm, I'm really big on family. So like I always tell people, my siblings are, all of my siblings are half. And my stepmother and all of them never, it was not half. We were all treated like whole. And so it gives me a different perspective on a lot of things. So like I always tell them, like, if you were to have a child, that's Sanaya's sibling. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm doing something with Sanaya, because of the type of relationship we have, I'd be like, hey, you know, do you care if I pick up blah, blah, blah? And let's go, I take them to the zoo or something like that. Some people are not mature enough to do that. So it's just like. I feel like that's, it's, it's a waste of time being mad at someone else for having another baby, you know, with somebody, somebody else because this whole, that whole like, oh, big, this baby mama beefing with this baby mama is like, it's stupid because right. what what's that gonna do? That's just gonna separate the child from their siblings. That's just gonna, you know, cause a rift in, in, in their relationship. And that, and that goes back to you not being over this person because if you was, if you didn't care, if you minded your business, and respected boundaries, respected the fact that they were with someone else and they moved on, it wouldn't be an issue. You right. know, you would be able to be mature and uh, meet meet this other person's uh, meet meet their the so mother of their child. Other, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. So and there won't be no issues. So just mind your business. Like I said, the only time I feel like you should have to speak on certain things is if your child is telling you something is going on with right. the other parent and, and it has something to do with their boyfriend or their girlfriend. That's when you're supposed to step up and say something. And also remember, sometimes kids over-exaggerate stuff. So make sure <laughs> before you run to somebody's house being all rowdy and crazy, you talk to the parent first. Because what the kid might have assumed happened might not have been what happened. and Or it could have been. So that's why you should have that conversation just as well. please understand the people that you have kids with. Try and again, just get to know them. Like, because... Y'all be having kids with anybody, man. That shit do not turn out good for y'all, man. So Yes. And listen, I tell this man all of the time. He, Because he always say, you're a pain in my ass. That used to be his line. But I'm like, nigga, yeah. you got a good Hello, baby you're mama. You're a pain in my ass. But, but I am a, I'm a good, am I not a good baby mama? Yes, I communicate. Yeah, yeah. I don't really I'm, bother him. From what his I see life, other people going through, I'll be, I'll be grateful. But that just comes with it. Like, you're going to. Get on my nerves. I'm gonna get on your nerves. That's just that's just how it's gonna go. But like at the end of the day, business gets taken care of. Like Shania's good. We good. Like yep. we 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 could we could talk on the phone. We could text and say whatever. Like you know we, we we friends at the end of the day. We started out as friends. So right. That's how that's how it's supposed to end. And that's what happens when you move on. You're not gonna be able to co-parent successfully if you can't move on. You gotta take your feelings out of the equation because what matters your child please y'all remember that your child is what matters we'll start with the next topic communication oh. Woo! hold up <laughs> let's get it let's get into communication i i am much better at communication now and i actually think that's from our relationship because neither one of us communicated yeah. good at all it was terrible it was, it was very bad and very unhealthy so when it came to co-parenting i don't think we knew how to communicate it was a lot of um disrespect um cussing hanging up on each other mm -hmm. um, i hate that shit you hang up on me yes because oh listen i feel like after beep 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 i'm petty let me pull, <laughs> I'm gonna pull her back so and I try to hang up, up on me to hang up. yes that's really how petty we was but um also, communication, I think, came with um, maturity, too. Um, I think, in the beginning, I think I got a little bit better at communicating. And then he did, too. Um, we just kind of slowly started. It was hard. And a lot... What really happened, this is crazy. There was a point where we could not communicate at all. So, <laughs> we would... <laughs> We would go through my grandmother. Like, mm -hmm. if he wanted Sanaya or he wanted... Oh, and here's the thing. I have never, ever, ever, no matter what we have gone through with co-parenting, never kept him from Sanaya. I don't believe in doing Absolutely. that. Yeah. The only reason you should keep your child away from their other parent is if there's harm involved. But I never did that. Angry. We even got into this one argument. I was supposed to drop her off, and he said something to me, like... And I was like, oh, you're being disrespectful. I'm not coming and bringing her to you. And he came and picked her up. He said, well, I'm coming to get her. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop you from getting your child. So I don't believe in doing that. Petty. But it won't petty. Don't <laughs> let no one disrespect you. That's for males and females. Petty. Okay. Yeah. You got to learn how to communicate. There should there are certain things that you just shouldn't say. And I just felt like I don't even want to put myself in that space because we're both petty, but I'm pettier. 
So I'm like, I ain't finna even go there. Let me just go ahead and say I'm not dropping her off to you. But yeah, we went through my grandma. I was like, Ma, I don't want to communicate with him. He ain't want to communicate with me, so we're gonna communicate through you. They and got tired of that they shit. got yeah. <laughs> Y'all better figure this shit out. Yeah. That's basically what my grandma said. Like, Damn, so they tired of being a middleman. They, they did. That. Y'all figure that shit out. But then another thing, I think a really big turn in our co-parenting relationship. I actually have to give credit where it's due, and it goes to my father. Um, I talk to my father about anything because he's one of those people he's not just gonna agree with me because i'm his daughter um but one particular day um this also goes into communication i was talking to him on the phone and i don't know i think maybe the communication what i was saying he didn't understand what i was saying and it kind of turned into a, a war of words and i was like really upset so i went to my dad and i was like crying because i'm like dad i really had good intentions this is what I was trying to say, blah, 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 blah. And my dad was like, well, when did you get off the phone with him? I was like, I just got off the phone with him. He said, all right, I'm going to call him. My dad calls, and he puts him on speaker, and he's like, Jasmine's sitting right here. This is what she told me. This is what's going on. Let me tell you what I see because I am around Sanaya, blah, blah, blah. And let's figure out where the miscommunication is. Um, and one thing, as he said, I'm very petty. So I have um, I have said some some nasty and rude things to him. And he's also said them to me, um, but we know Sometimes what buttons to, to push. Yes, you we know what to buttons to push, and we know we hit below the belt. So you know, it's just me and you, and, and we know how we are. Sometimes, especially when you're at that stage that we was at, yeah. it's like when there's nobody that's in between to be like, all right, hold on, uh, uh, like somebody on the outside looking in, right? To explain, like, right. load. Let me tell you what he's saying. Let me tell you what she's saying, because exactly. y'all are not, y'all are hearing each other, but y'all yeah, are not comprehending yeah. what the other person is saying. And I think when my dad did that for both of us, and Q told him how he felt about certain things when I said how I felt, that was like the turning point in our co-parenting. Because after that, we really didn't have much issues. It was kind of like petty stuff. And that also has to do with communication. Um, men are not like women. I repeat, men are not like women when it comes to taking care of a child. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's not going to be the same. So you cannot compare them. And I realized maybe what comes, um, for, you know, mother, mothering instantly for me. This it's not the same for a man. So I had to tell him certain things. Like, to me, I'm like, damn, nigga, this shit is common sense. But you have to think like a man is not going to think like a woman. Nah, because I had, because, because, like, when I, I'm, I'm big on tough love and letting the, the child learn the hard way. Like, it. Like, they don't have to learn the hallway all the time. Like, but certain things, it's like, all right, see what they're going to do. Like, let's let them figure it out, you know? And, um, this and is I'm a baby. <laughs> and she won't, she wouldn't let her, let her, like, take her lumps. It's like, you, you have to let them do, you have to let them, you know, sometimes hurt themselves or fall down and let them get back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, this one, this one instance I'm thinking of. Um, Shania was was real small. She started walk. She just started walking, and she was um, she started opening and closing drawers. And she ended up when she closed the drawer, she smashed her finger in the drawer when she closed it. And I'm sitting there watching her. You know, she started crying, and Jasmine over here like, "Oh my God!" And I'm like, "No, no, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let her crazy. let her see. Let her try it again and see and see." She do it again, she close it, she smash her finger in there again. She keep doing it now. Now the third time she tries it, she closes it like this so she won't put her hand in there. I said, see, she learning. I'm just saying, I feel like, that's my baby. She's smart. She was she, smart. Yeah. She are, yes, our daughter is- very smart. She will learn. Very intelligent, a little too intelligent. Okay, she's three right, going on right. 30. I don't know what be going on. That's a grown woman <laughs> inside her brain. But yeah, she is. But um, that's something else y'all gotta remember, men and women. We definitely I, now I think I'm I do more tough love. I don't know what going on at his house, but I be over here and I be having to put my foot down because my daughter she's she's a tester. But also just remember like with certain things with um like toothbrushing, flossing, or certain things that you want done bedtime. I'm really strict over here with bedtimes. I've been Structure. a little little loose lately because of the pandemic and stuff. And so now I sometimes don't go to daycare. But I had tonight on a schedule, mm -hmm. and when she would go to her dad's house, he wouldn't follow it. But I also know like it is the weekend. But Tanaya will be up at like 2. If you let her, she, I literally just, I don't know what time it is. What time is this? Like 10, 30, 11? Yeah. She was just yeah, like, yes, up. mommy. Girl, go to bed. You supposed to be in the bed. Now I'm cutting the TV <laughs> off and you really going to bed. Because you, you were supposed to be low and just lay there. But now nah, you want to keep getting up and stuff and you know it's late. Right. 
So just communicate um, those things with our next neighbor. Oh, yeah. Learn to shut the fuck up. Yes, learn to shut the fuck up. Okay, so I wrote this topic because nobody's going to argue with themselves. And I think if one of us in the middle of an argument just shut the fuck up, the other person would have stopped talking. You got to learn to pick and choose your battles. Some things is worth going back and forth with and some things is not. So you just got to shut the fuck up. I know we've had a lot of like arguments and we don't even got nothing. All right, whatever. All right, whatever. All right, right whatever. <laughs> come to a, a, a good conclusion. We don't never, we don't never solve our problems with arguing back and forth. It's just da 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 yeah, yeah, I didn't hang up and mm -hmm. nothing gets solved. And then we won't talk for days. And right, we actually, right. it's something dealing with Sonia. So now neither one of us have the answer for whatever it is we started arguing about. Exactly. And we like, all right, let it's me just a waste of time text. Man. And I'm a call. He do not like to really answer the phone for real. I am not a phone person. I'm a caller. And let me tell you why I'm a caller. When you're texting someone, it could be misconstrued. You can't tell yeah. the tone of a text. So if I'm trying to tell him something important or something that we might have a disagreement on, or something I'm trying to get advice, I will call him and most of the time he won't answer so I have to text him like, hey, call me when you get a chance. I'm calling about something important. I don't like texting and anymore. And I tell her to do that. I tell, I say, if call, uh, text me and let me know because if I see call and it, it's not just her, it's anybody like, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of things going on with me. I'm an introvert. So sometimes when I'm in my own space, I'm watching TV, or I'm doing something. Uh, I, I don't feel like being bothered. I don't feel like being on the phone. So I'm, I'll sit there and let it ring. And, you know, if I know it's important, then I'll, okay, Andrew. let me. Yeah, because he'd be looking like, oh, it's just my baby mama. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, but especially exactly. when we was beefing, right when we was beefing like, heavy, right. this nigga would not pick up the phone. We was we was beefing. We was beefing. So I know that nigga was like, oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm definitely not answering. Answer, fuck her. Right. And I'm like, damn, nigga, I'm actually trying to talk to you about something important. People, they'd be like, be on me about that. You don't never answer your phone. Yeah, I just be looking at it. I don't even. I be yes. by my phone the whole time watching y'all call me. But, uh, shit. but <laughs> I just feel yeah. I don't like to text certain stuff because just like you could be like, and I be busy. You can say man. fuck you I to someone. Like you could be having a conversation now. and you're texting and you're like fuck you, and you might be like playing or you might really be saying fuck you. But nobody can tell which way you're saying mm -hmm. that. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so with exactly. certain stuff, when I'm saying like, hey, I need you to do this, this, and this, and eyes at your house, you might read the text message and, and feel like, damn, what you trying to say? I'm not doing this. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I'm really just saying, hey. I noticed something happened at home or she needs a little bit and more attention. That's another thing here. I had to learn too was stop getting so defensive on things and really try to like understand the other person's perspective, your perspective. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I, I'm very defensive sometimes. Yeah. And I think that I'm being under pressure or I think I'm being criticized. I don't like that. Yeah. So. And I, I, I feel like I have something to do with that too because uh, I think that's one of our topics so I'm not going to get too much into it. But um, your words, your words are um, sometimes when you say certain stuff, they stick with a person. So now they're assuming mm -hmm. that that's what you're saying every time that you talk to them. So you gotta be careful with your words. That's another topic. Set things. a good example. Set that's a important. good example. Yes. Um, one thing uh, that we we failed in the beginning. We're good now. We both come from um, homes where you take your experiences and you make them better for your child. So I looked at what I felt like my parents lacked and I didn't want to lack that for Sanaya. I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. I did that. So even when we broke up, I said, listen, I don't ever want Sanaya to feel like she has to choose between us. She is definitely a daddy's girl. And then sometimes <laughs> she's a mommy's girl. But you don't want your child to feel like I have to choose between mommy and daddy. Or right. I can't sp right. speak freely because the other parent is going to get upset. So I told him. Let's try not to do that. I and want her to feel like she can have a When you a break up with the parent, with the co-parent, um, sometimes the child will feel like, oh, because, and y'all living in separate houses, so the child may feel like, oh, I got to choose between which one and this one, especially, and then when the courts get involved, because I had to go through this as a kid, like, mm -hmm. um, my dad moved to Virginia, my mom was in New York, um, and it was like, I'm used to them being in the same household, and now I have to choose which one I got to live with. And they, the, the people in the courtroom is asking me, all right, so you want to live with your mother or you want to live with your dad? And I'm like, mm -hmm. how the fuck am I going to choose? Like, am I, if I choose one person, 
maybe the other person is going to feel like, damn, my what, my kid don't love me no more or whatever. Right. Like, and this, all this stuff goes through a child's mind, so. And that's crazy because I had to do the same thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Because choosing between my grandmother and going to live with my regular, my biological mother. And it, it's hard. So I was just like, I don't want her to feel like that. Also, I don't want her to feel like, um, when they start getting older, they have field trips and you want to invite your parents. I want her to know that she can invite both of us. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to act crazy and she don't have to choose. Because listen, my parents are like, they're opposites, okay? They just, they don't mix. They don't mix mm -hmm. in the same room. And I remember one year I asked them to take me to go to the corral. I should have never asked that. We, they was in there arguing. <sighs> Some people just can't get it together. I don't, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know what so it is. I was it's like, like, I don't not want someone to go are. through that. So you just can't co-parent or get get along. Some people just not. I guess they just not meant to mesh. And I mean, that's fine. I guess you just. That's why it's important to pay attention. Just like I said, y'all need to go ahead and click that video um, on my page. Y'all need to, to to really know who y'all dating and having these kids with. And just remember, if y'all need to go watch that video, just listen, look at the signs, and think about that stuff when dating. Because you are stuck look with this the person. signs. Y'all be you ignoring the signs. And they be, they be bling, 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 bling. And I really yeah, think we really worked so face. good as friends. And that's the crazy thing. We was great as friends. Not as much as partners. <laughs> Maybe in the beginning, but it started getting a little crazy. And we also, <laughs> yeah, that shit went. So I'll be like, damn, at one point, I love my child. I'll never take her away. But I'm like, I really wish we had to stay friends. Because we was really good at, as friends. But after that, I was ready to knock that nigga <laughs> not that nigga head off his shoulders so yeah that shit is, is crazy but yeah just co-parenting successfully is super um important yeah. you gotta oh wait i wanted to say something else on this setting a good example um like as a parent your child is supposed to look up to you so you gotta make sure that you are setting a good example as far as like a lot of times our parents say, you don't want to be like me, you want to be better than me. Right. But, you know, it, a, a kid, you, you don't care about that shit. You want to be like your parents, you want to be like your father. Like, your, your father's your hero, your, your mom is, you know, your role model or whatever the case is. Like, so you got to be that person for them as far as, like, you know, career-wise or, you know, if, if you're doing something like a hobby and you, and you turn into... Um, a way to make money or whatever you, you want to have success and you want to be, be able to bring uh, generational wealth in a, in a way that um, something to pass down to your kids you know uh, stuff of that nature and I don't think that that's practiced enough especially in the black um, community you know our, with our families we a lot of the times generations before us we're going through the same exact shit we're doing the same exact shit now that our ancestors went through and it's like where is the learning curve, like? Right. Where's the knowledge? That yeah, you're supposed like to pass that you done, like you're, um, you 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 lived on this earth for 60, 70 years. However old your grandparents are, and um, I, when I when I turn eighteen, you just throw me out to the wolves or throw me out to the world or whatever, and just say, hey, learn. Like you're not gonna tell me the mistakes right. you made or what, so I don't have to go through the same shit. So I gotta live the same. 60 70 years trying to figure it out so yeah. i say that that's 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 important yes me. and talk to you even though our, our baby too small talk to your kids about credit right that is super credit. important and i feel like when i turned 18 i just started owning your own business with well, these credit cards and stuff because i didn't really learn yet owning your own business i'm very adamant um i had to get my own car i'm very adamant at having a savings account set up for sanaya um, at an early age. Um, Just go and, good with the next topic, too. Uh, good. A car. Um, I want her to have um, that type of stuff. I'm I'm so much better at saving because I was really bad at it. But I want Sanaya, like, when she turns a certain age, I want to have stuff already set up for her so that when she has a rainy day, I'm not just going to give it to her, but when she has her rainy days and stuff like that, she knows she got something to fall back on. And I feel like our parents don't do that either a lot of parents especially my father he feel like after 18 you're gonna figure it out on your own basically in a sense like i'm not gonna help you with certain stuff but you're grown legally you're an adult but we still have a child mindset we're still right, learning right. stuff so you can't expect us to make it's hard. adult decisions it, yeah, decisions it, like that it's hard to plan that far ahead like me thinking about saving money and, and keeping it there for 20 years or 18 years from when my child is, that's hard to do because we're living in the now. Like things are happening now in your life. So it's like, 
damn, like, I got to save. Yeah, saving is important and stuff like that. But, like, when you think that far ahead, it's like, damn, can I really, like, keep it up for that long? You know what I'm right. saying? So it, it takes to unlearn and relearn. You have to, like, put yourself in a different mindset, a different mentality. Right, and you got to remember, we also a young parent, so right. just like we ain't like we ain't know how to take care of no baby by ourselves. Right, everything. So was, everything oh, was man. new and crazy, and it's so much in this crime. So now I was actually a pretty good baby. She didn't really cry or stuff yeah, like that, was. but it's just overwhelming. So you're trying to learn how to be a better person. You're trying to learn how to be a new parent. You're trying to balance. Some babies is annoying. Life. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but she. Our baby's annoying now. Yeah, she no, wasn't annoying as no, a baby. A crying ass baby, like God damn. They they can't talk. Hey, shut that me. baby up in the movie theater. That's why you can't take no baby to the movie theater. I'll be one of those people in the in the back. That's crazy. <laughs> you annoying. What's the next um, topic? The next topic is root for root for the other parent. Yes. And that that's why I said what we just talked about connects with that because if. One person is doing good, y'all all can do good. Like, you know, like, like, y'all all, we, we all family. Right. So, your success is, it's a nice success, it's my success. You know, you want, you have to want to see the people around you succeed. You can't, exactly, you know, you can't hate on the, nobody. Like, and that's you know what, what I'm saying? saying. I'd be like, listen, when You're I'm bad, good, why you hating? <laughs> when I'm good, I know Sanaya good. So, when he good, I know Sanaya is good too, because, like I said, we co parent, we split. Certain bills down the middle. I, I have to say, let me. I'm gonna say this though. Uh, one issue I always had is men really don't know because Sanai stays with me. The amount of money that really goes into a child. So I really get like the, oh, the a lot. Maybe now, but I'm saying like the bare minimum. The minimum, bigger they get is. It's more right, but I was telling him like I'm. I really am asking for the bare minimum, and you're thinking it's a lot. But if you really see what I spend on Sanai. It's crazy. Even now, like, Sanaya is going through this phase. She's going to be tall like her dad. So, 4T is high waters on her now, mm -hmm. but 5T is too big on her. And I also tell her to tell me, because I'm bad at, I'm bad at remembering things. And I, I like I said, like, I be so focused on certain things that I don't take the time to think about other shit. So, it's like, send me a list. Send, tell me what she needs or tell me, you know, certain right. things and then I'll get it handled because if I'm ripping and running and going around, it's nothing for me to cash app, send that, all right, she needs that, all right, bet, do that or go to the store, get whatever, you know what I'm saying and right. do it like that. So that's a good thing that we're at now because before we, we was terrible at that too. And I just be like, listen, let me go ahead. I need this because Sanai is doing, is getting this and I keep buying stuff. I need you to buy stuff now and um hair all of that isn't um expensive because we have a girl so i'm i'm one of those parents i don't like for parents to look good and they they kid no i'd be oh, really I hate serious that about sanaya's that hair. bothers me i hate seeing that yes yeah, so i'd be like sanaya hair is looking crazy i need to get her hair done but i can't always i usually don't ask him and i just get her hair done you but christian dior your child wearing pay less fucking thrift store shit like what the hell you hey, doing ain't nothing wrong with Store though, but I'm just saying, yeah, don't be. There do be some people that <laughs> be bugging. Shit store, it do, but they, people do be bugging. So yes, when the other parent wins, most of the time you win too. And if you got them on child support, they ain't do what they supposed to do. They got a better job, you still winning because now you can update child support too. I'm just oh saying, ladies. God. I'm saying for the one niggas don't always take sure. care of their kids, and there's women like that too. There are men. Toxic. That's not toxic. That's true. This is the thing. You, she we, is giving advice for these vindictive this women. This is not for vindictive women. This is what I'm telling you. If you are raising that baby by yourself, it take it took two people to make that baby. So if you're the one parent that's taking care of it on your own, then the other parent need to come yeah, up with some coins. That's, that's what I'm saying. Don't just do it to be petty. But I'm just saying, like, you're, you're going to take care of your child one way or another. We're going to do this the easy way. Oh, my God. Or the hard way. Sound like old dude. <laughs> Pick it. Which one you gonna do? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, what's the next topic, man? You're killing me. Um, let me go back. Let's see here. We have don't be bitter. Ooh, child. That's important. Bitter, 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 bitter. That yes. goes from Ooh. that goes to keeping the person away from the child and. Um, using the system and shit against the father and all this shit, and th th this goes for when the, the the dad is actually in the child's life and trying to be there. Cause I be seeing some crazy shit. That's why I be like, man, I'm a, I'm lucky because I be seeing shit like 
I saw this one video on the internet where the, the dude was on the phone with the mother and she was trying to charge him for for our like hourly to be with his kid. I'm like, what? Wow. Like this is crazy. Like I would never even like guess that there's people out there like this. But it happens. Mm -hmm. it's, that's why he, give, he was giving me watch. a hard time, and I'm like, bro, I ain't even, I ain't even gotta watch scratching the surface, with, man. Cause that's crazy. Don't be bitter, man. Be Listen, and y'all men be bitter too. Definitely. You went through a little bitter stage Definitely. too. Petty. I'm a petty. petty. Yes, he went through a little petty stage, and I was like, at the end of the day, like I said, I will say that we both had our flaws in our relationship, but. He did some things that just for me was like, I need to leave. You Also, men and women, you have to choose yourself first. Mm -hmm. If you keep going through certain things with a person, people are always going to say that they're going to change. They're not going to change unless they want to change for themselves. And that's just what it is. And I felt like you're going to keep telling me you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this. And I might have said certain things as well, but we're not doing it. And at this mm -hmm. point, we're just going to be angry and bitter in a relationship. So why do that? So I chose to leave because I felt like it was unhealthy and I don't want to go to jail. And that's where the fuck I was going to go, <laughs> to jail. So I said, if it who the hell going to take care of some It's about growth and it's definitely development. Growth. You yeah, have so. to learn from your mistakes and learn not to... I don't never make the same mistakes twice. That's one thing. I may fuck up and, you know, I do things and make mistakes, but I always learn from them. Like, I, I don't do... You're not going to catch me doing things over and over again going back and forth to jail or whatever the case is like that, that, yeah, i don't see how people do that. that i don't see how people <laughs> do that man because uh, yeah, yeah so that bitter stuff you have to you have to let it go i think we all went through i think my my bitter stage was more so not it wasn't like bitter because he was with a person i think i was just bitter because i felt like damn i've invested a lot of time into this relationship and for it to have ended the way it did and now i still have to be a mom and try to still deal with you while going through what i'm going through a long I don't relationship even... like that is never going to end well though yeah, it's like... very rare that it's it's a mutual like okay you go your way i go mine we're good like no it doesn't right it's not but it don't always like have to be as detrimental either it just it just depends it, on what it was that made the relationship it's no getting around that it's, because there's the feelings, there's love, there's like, I feel like most people are just going to have to go through that shit. They got to go through, deal with the bullshit. And, you but know, there's and different then, types but of bitter. To learn. You have to learn through it. Like, you can't just keep hitting that wall. You have to break through that shit. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and there's different types of bitter. There's bitter because oh, yeah. you're there's gone. Slash and there's, your tires, bitter. And, yeah, it's a lot of crazy stuff. I didn't do that. I just more so was banging on this nigga. I'm not really trying to. <laughs> nigga fuck you is how I felt I was just oh, banging on man. him and he was just being petty and I feel like we didn't really have for me I, I didn't deal with a lot of bitterness until I actually I felt like I got into another relationship and it was kind of different and that's not something that you were used to so then I'm like alright now I know this nigga's being petty like mm -hmm. one time this nigga was like Sanaya loves phones she's loved phones since I don't even know maybe like before one so, but she loved to be on FaceTime with her dad. So I would give her the phone because she wants to be independent. She don't want no help. She don't want you to hold the phone for her. I gave her the phone one day and she also is at this thing where she wants to show everybody and everything that's going mm -hmm. on. And I think he thought I was being petty, but I really was just letting him talk to Sanaya. And my boyfriend was over there. And here's Sanaya goes, she's like showing, you know, the camera. She, she harmless. <laughs> And he said, oh, y'all over, y'all being, y'all having family time, or, oh, look at the y'all family. And he <laughs> said something, like, petty like that. And I was like, you're being petty. Mm. You're like, but I'm not even, mm. I'm not being petty. So I think sometimes he thought I was being petty, or it might have seemed like that. But I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not being petty. Like, I, I wouldn't do nothing like that. So, and that's why, with dating other people, that's why I'd be like, especially if y'all bitter, y'all be talking to y'all significant others about stuff, and they get this um idea of your baby father or your baby mother and it's not always accurate sometimes mm -hmm. it is accurate because a lot of stuff i've vented about was more so communication i'm like dang this nigga's like he's gonna do this and he didn't do it and i'm like venting about it that's why you gotta watch who you talk to about certain things because you might be telling them something this might be a good person but you might be just saying something bad that they did and now the person that you're venting to thinks that this person is evil or just right this, or a piece of other shit. yeah just a piece of shit and it's like no i'm just telling you something that they did yeah because people do 
listen people do fucked up things and it's annoying but i feel like you still gotta communicate like i said you're stuck with the person so i feel like he might have done some fucked up things i might have done some fucked up things but we're still here you know what i'm saying it's all a, a learning, learning thing learning so and, and growing. yeah it's growing you're not gonna be perfect nothing nobody's perfect and you know that's all the only thing is just just like anything else in life, you got to crawl before you can walk. You got to fall to get back up. You know what I'm saying? Riding a bike, skating, right. whatever it is. Um, the last one we have here is remember your child is what's important. Yes, y'all. No matter what you do, that child comes first. Mm-hmm. It's just as simple as that. And they're watching. Luckily they're watching for everything. us... Our daughter, I don't think she remembered us being um, in the same house together because she was small. So I, maybe she might remember like little stuff, but I don't know. But then again, she's really smart, so I don't know. She so, don't remember that. Yeah, luckily we didn't have to deal with that or have to explain. I th of course, one day I'm probably going to have to, she might say, why are mommy and daddy not together? And that's a conversation that we would have to have with her. But um, luckily for us, we didn't really have to... Um, go through nothing like that but the child is what's important and the child's feelings are, are important and the stuff that your child sees is important and with two different households you don't know what your child sees or right. especially the older they get the more yes the uh, aware shit they are the, their memory is crazy like so yes. please be careful what y'all do around fighting and stuff around their kids you, you you fighting with the mother or mother fighting with the father in front of the, they they see all this they watch it and they take notes they they remember they and that affects the child uh it it, it it affects them mentally and it it could it, it could affect them for the rest of their lives sometimes like sometimes you know they you can repress certain things and they can turn out a certain way and not know why they're doing something th certain things and they have these habits and why you know what i'm saying right because that's what they that, that's what they seen that's what they was around and that's know? why i was really big on arguing like if me and him got an argument a, a lot of times i would bang because i always had an eye so i'm like if we start getting into it and he start cussing or getting rowdy and i'd be like yo chill your child's in the car but if you keep going i'm like all right nigga, i'm banging beep 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 because i don't want her to <laughs> hear she yeah. knows our voices. I don't want her to be like, dang, you know, they're arguing or, right, you know, right. stuff like that. So I'm not going to do that. I don't, Every I'm not time that we, my baby. If we have a, a debate or argument or whatever the case is, like, she don't, Sanai don't know about it. Our child yeah. don't know about it. Like. And we'll walk around. We'll Listen, we can be fucking pissed at each other. Sanai will never know. Right. Because if we dropping off or picking up, I'm not going to carry that type of energy. He's not going to yeah. carry it because I, I just don't want her to. I want her to just feel like she's loved. In and front when of her, she we best us, friends. Yeah, like, I don't, we, we can't <laughs> argue about shit, but not in front of her. And most, everything we argue about is usually pertaining to her or, you know, some type right, of communication. Right. Yes, that's, this is, now I gotta tell the story. This is wow. communication. Yes, let me tell you about this one. So he, oh, he pissed me off. So we, we switch weekends, right? And like he said, he don't he not good at remembering stuff. I don't know what he had going on you know that he didn't. He didn't remember stuff. to pick up his child from daycare. I don't know what was going oh, on. Oh yeah, I feel like that should happen care. with every father. Th Listen, at it least. just happened multiple times. But this one particular time, I was really pissed off. My <laughs> car, I didn't have my car was um, it was only one car at my house. So me and my boyfriend were sharing a car. So I had texted him the night before to tell him what I had put in Sonia's overnight bag because it was his weekend, and he was like, "All right." So the daycare closed at 5.30 and luckily we had went, me and my boyfriend had went to the grocery store close to Sonia's daycare because we moved. We lived farther from her daycare. And the lady was like, hi, Miss Aubrey. Now she only say that when she knows she's going to say something that's going to make me mad. Other than that, she usually say, hey, Jasmine. I was like, hey, and I'm looking at the time. It's probably like 5.50 or something. She was like, yeah, um, Sonia's still here. Her dad hasn't picked her up, so we're just giving you a call. <laughs> I was fucking livid. I said, okay, thank you. So then I call him, but listen, I hear that he's in the car. So then I calm down. I'm like, all right, maybe he's on his way to go pick Sonia up. So I'm like, hey, what are you doing? You in the car? He said, yeah, I'm about to. I think it's because I'm finna go get something to eat. <laughs> I said, um. I am crying. Are you forgetting something? He was like, what? What are you talking about? Tonight? Nah, wow, what's up? He's like, nah, what? 
Sanaya, I just had. I, it's not my time to pick up Sanaya. I had Sanaya last week. Now, mind you, he he did have Sanaya the week before because Sanaya wanted to go over his house again. And I said to him, listen, since she's coming over this weekend, do you want me to keep her next weekend? He was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll take her again. I said, you sure? <laughs> he says, yeah, I'll take her. So I'm like, all right. So then when he don't pick her up, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is what made me mad. I said, all right, well, are you going to go get her? He was like, nah, I'm on my way. I'm on my way to Portsmouth to go get some food. Right? That yeah, shit. You remember everywhere else? You remember yes, the time I was place? Fucking, that's how pissed that nigga had picked. God, I was damn. pissed the fuck off. I remember off. what I did last night. You nigga, you, went, you was going on a date. You went, you took someone on a date, and that shit pissed me off. Because I'm like, nigga, you better take your daughter oh, on your date, too. Yeah, I remember you that need to pick now. her ass up, too. So <laughs> I'm, I'm hot. So then I'm like, damn, I'm luckily we was over here. So then I was like, all right, you're going to come get her? This nigga did not want to come get her, either. So then I said, no, you're going to come get her. When you finish eating, you're going to come pick her up. I already got plans going on this weekend. So he did come and pick her up. I was looking at this nigga. You know what he says? Man, you a pain in my ass. No, nigga, you're mm. a pain in my ass. Here here go your bag. That'd be my fault, though, because I'd be dead agreeing. <laughs> I'd be agreeing to shit sometimes, and I'd be like, and then I'd be forgetting that I'd be agreeing to shit. Like, I'd be yes. like, then I'd be like, damn, I really said I was going to fucking do this and shit. And I, all I said to him was, you suck my pain. You need to, an apology. I'm sorry. Let me hear it. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. That's right. another thing that you gotta be. You gotta be mature enough to be able to be like, damn. All right, I'm sorry. I fucked up. Yeah, because uh, stuff happens, whatever. and sometimes we have to switch weekends. So we'll talk about that too. Um, and yeah, communicate with certain stuff. Like he went out of town for three weeks. Uh, it was a long three weekends for me. <laughs> so now I was. Am I going with my daddy? Am I going with my daddy? Am I going with my daddy? But he did say something to me, so I'm like, all right. You gotta communicate. Right. I ain't just skip town and just like that. Yeah, communication. Like with communication, all of this shit, none of this shit happens. Like you know what I'm saying. Everything that you know we fuck up at is because we didn't communicate. We you know there was a, like I didn't communicate where I was supposed to. She didn't communicate where she was supposed to. And so. pettiness. That's just, yeah. Pettiness, bitterness, all of that stuff um, plays, plays a, part. a part. So y'all just gotta kind of find a. Common ground. common ground yeah and like i said we're not perfect we argue about stuff uh we try not to argue as much. we really don't argue as much now uh we do better with communication um i'm one of those i want tonight my our daughter's very energetic so i want her in a lot of stuff like if they got basketball or softball or something going on mm -hmm. i want to put her in it um but when you make decisions like that i also try to ask him to help so i'll be like hey can you do blah 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 blah, blah so i can see what's going on let me figure this out. Let me figure this out. And you also have to remember, money is not um, everything. And that's also something in the very beginning of us co-parenting that I was explaining to him. Because I'm like, everything is not about money. If you can't financially support your daughter, be there for her. As in, come pick her up. Be like, hey, do you need something? And that's something, a conversation I have with my dad. He said, men, we don't always think like that. You know, I, we know that, oh, your we child lives with So we always try to get to the money with a bag at. But we don't think about. Don't think about the, the simple there, stuff. Quality, like, like, damn, let me see. Or, right. Quality you know. time is important. That's what I told him. If you can't financially be there, just pick her up and stuff like that. Or you don't think, damn, I know the baby, our baby stay with her mom. Let me go pick up some diapers. Let me go pick up mm -hmm. some wipes. Men don't do that. If you want diapers and wipes from them. You, you got to ask. And I know for women, we we feel like, why should we have to ask? That was my thing. I felt like I shouldn't have to ask you because I'm like, you know your and that, and that, here. That's like just extra to me. Because I'm like, just if I'm telling you this is what I need to happen in order for me to do this, why are you like questioning this? Like, I just do that and then things will be taken care of. Right. And I, my dad was just like, he is a very seasoned man with five kids. But anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> what the I'm the oldest out of his mm -hmm. kids. I had the conversation with my dad. And he was like, I don't even, he was like, I don't do that either at that age. He said, yeah, when you say it now to me, that just sounds like common sense. But he said, you have to remember y'all are young and she was younger than you. Women, obviously we mature most of the time faster than men anyway. He said, if you want something, you need to just straight out tell him what it is because <laughs> he not thinking like that. And I, I, for a woman, that's the stuff we think about. Like, oh, let me, you know, I need some diapers, I need some wipes or clothes. That's something else that we argued about. I'm very particular because I do be spending a lot of money on some of my clothes. Not that it's expensive, but just because she grows out of stuff so fast. Her feet grow out of stuff so fast. And when I was packing bags, I always knew what I put in the bags. Shoes, socks, or whatever. And he lost everything. 
It, it would be, I'll almost, come back with almost, a sock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking about when she was over my house. Oh, my God. Yes, when I would pack stuff from my house, the she would come back are, with one sock she, or a missing she shirt. She would take her socks over in the bed. Like, I would, now, at this point, I, I, I take her socks off immediately. Now yes, or them, shoes. Like. I would pack more than one pair of shoes because... I don't know what they're gonna do during the weekend. I like to like try to take some out to like places or that's something y'all should start doing more too, like taking yeah, her to little yeah, places. Yeah. But I would just pack outfits because I want her to look nice when she goes out. So I have like two pairs of shoes. I I'll come back. It'd be like one shoe. Where the other shoe at? <laughs> I remember these vans I bought her. I was like, the van is like, he argued me down. I said, you only break, gave me one van back. No, I didn't. Both of the vans was in there. Wait, why did do you, you accept know one sneaker? You should, like, I don't even. You really dropped know her off. Is. To my grandparents. So I went through bag on a shoe. With one oh, wait, shoe. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. She had a pair of shoes on. And right, and fine. I packed another pair. Do you know? I, <laughs> I put told one him. Shoe in the bag? That's crazy. Yes, yeah, so I had just bought her those vans for Christmas. I was pissed. They were so cute. They was like li lilac, lavender color with she unicorns. She might be capping, y'all. I'm not capping because look, let me tell you. Watch bag. this. That's crazy. I told him about this shoe. He was like, the shoe was not at my house. I looked, the shoe's not at my house. A year later. A year later, his year mom later. goes over there. She comes down from New York. She find the damn shoe and give it to me. <laughs> I said, your son is a fucking I idiot. Weak. I said, son, I can't even fit these shoes no more. And I kept telling him they was over here. And he weak. kept telling me they want. Your mom found the shoe. It was Vans. Yes, it was Vans. Hmm. I was pissed. So at that point, and then I argued with him a lot about her stuff coming back missing or missing stuff. So I just told him, listen, this is what we're going to do. Because we're going to keep arguing about this. And I'm going to argue down about some clothes. I'm going to pack up some stuff. And that's here. And then he had gave me some money for clothes. So I split the money he gave me and split the clothes down the middle. And gave him half. And I kept half. I said, keep these at your house. So then we don't got to worry. Right. Because I'm going I'm to be bitching, as you would say, about her clothes. Because I don't like her stuff not coming back. So you have stuff at your house. And I have works. stuff at my house. And it works for us. And then she, obviously she'll just have on her outfit. From when he pick her up, and then obviously she has something different on right. when she um come home. Now, right. now it's like that. But I used to pick her up and be like, why the fuck she still got the same outfit on? They don't be going nowhere. But I be like, nigga, I need you to put something on, put something different on this child, cause then I feel like she had no bath or brush her teeth or nothing like that. And I, I when she time. don't um get like like when she get older, I feel like then you know I'll put her outside with the kids. But them kids in my neighborhood, no, don't, are bad she ain't going out. You ain't putting her outside with them kids in your neighborhood. <laughs> they bad as fuck. They should. I don't like, even want her outside with her these around. kids. No, I'm saying like take her to like a jumping place or like y'all need to have like the jungle gym. Yeah, like, like daddy thing. daughter time or like sometimes I'll just take her out to eat in the morning. Yeah, we got a um, or, um, thing outside in our in our uh, complex. We got a little jungle gym, little park thing right there. You know, you know it's COVID, so make sure you bring some wipes or something. Yeah, you know she got asthma. I don't got time for something like that. But yeah, these are just like I said, these are just some little tips and tricks um, that we did and experiences that we went through to get where we're at now because i'm telling you niggas was ready to box each other up <laughs> and i'm pet like i said i'm petty i got brothers y'all i got older brothers and so i i listen i done caught them off a couple times because i you got like that's why you said you got to be careful who you've been to but my family the same way his family gonna ride for him my family ride for for me and we just had to learn how to pick the correct people to talk to about stuff that's why i asked my dad Cause I was ready to get them paws put on you. Stop it, nigga. I got hands. What are you talking about? No, whatever. I don't got nothing to do with it. They don't got nothing to do with my family. Wow. This wow, crazy. my shoulder. I think I fucked my shoulder. Old ass. Ain't even old. I'm older than him. Word, man. My back man going crazy lately. I don't know what's going on. I'm getting old, y'all. I'm only 24, bro. You ain't even 25 yet. He ain't even... A little whip a snapper. I mean, you, you about to get, get the fuck out of here. You about to be 30. Stop it. You, you, you halfway through the door. That's all right. That's all right. I'm trying to get these queens. 30 is so right. Shit starts shutting down when you hit 30. That's all right. As long as I can work and I'm able to make sure it's not good, I am good. So thank you guys for tuning into our video. Thank you, co-host, for coming and doing this yes, video. I think he was a absolutely. little nervous at first. He thought it was about to be bash time and I was going to be bashing him up here. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's not what we be on. We family. We cool. So y'all try to take some of these tips and tricks. Apply them to your life. Um, the stuff that does apply to you. Um, and just work on your communication. And let the bitterness go. 
if y'all having issues, communicate and do it in a positive way as much as you can. Keep your children out of it um, as well. So until we have another video, thank you for tuning in again. And like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, all subscribe. All that good shit, man. Yes, and good night. Niggas is filming at night. I'm tired. Okay, <laughs> I'm an old lady. So uh, see y'all later.